turn with me to uh, Acts chapter 3, the book of Acts chapter 3. And as you're turning there, remember that Isaiah 14 says, Hallow gate, cry, O city, for thou art dissolved, O Palestina. And what shall we tell the nations? The Lord has founded Zion. I went by the Israeli embassy in Washington this week, and I noticed that the terrorist flags have been dissolved. The terrorist posters have been dissolved. The terrorist people are no longer there. The terrorist noise machines are no longer there. You see a lot of debris, a lot of trash that has been left there by them, but it is dissolved. All right, Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. A certain man, which was lame from birth, was carried daily and laid at the gate of the temple, which is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms or handouts of them who entered into the temple. And of course, what a prime position. People going into the temple want to make it right with God, and part of what they are to do is to give to the poor. So, perfect place. He saw Peter and John about to go into the temple and asked for something. Peter looked at him with John and said, look at us. Peter said, silver and gold I don't have to give you, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Now probably his right hand was out, you know, he probably had his hand out. So rather than put something in, he takes him by the hand and lifts him up. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones receive strength. He leaps up, stands, then walks, then enters with them into the temple. But now he's walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. They were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to him. Skip down to verse 12. When Peter saw it, he answered the people, you men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why do you look at us as though by our own power or our own holiness we made this man to walk? Same thing today. We look at ministries or ministers in the same way and think they're the ones that made the miracle. They're the ones and we just get our loved one to this particular ministry, to this, we'll get, they'll get healed. There are some healing gifts of the Spirit that operate in ministries. Yes, but every single one of us have the command of Jesus, in my name you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That is for every single believer. But let's continue here. Verse 16. His name, through faith in his name, that's the name of Jesus, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And this is where we're going to be for the rest of the evening. The first thing I want to point out is his name made this man strong. His name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. His name, the name of Jesus brings healing. The name of Jesus brings breakthrough. The name of Jesus brings power. The name of Jesus brings direction and purpose and all the other promises of God. It's in that name, that name above every name. No other name given among, among men under heaven whereby we may be saved. It brings salvation. It brings joy. It brings peace. The name of Jesus belongs to us. It also gives us access and prayer. The name of Jesus, his name has made him strong. His name, so let's, he, Peter starts out right away saying, it's the name of Jesus. It's not my name, it's not John's name, it's not the name of our church, the name of our ministry, it is the name of Jesus. And all of us who are believing, we possess that name. All of us possess the name of Jesus, that if you've been born again, it's your name. His name, through faith in his name. Now look at this, through faith, through, through the agency of faith in his name. Now we have his name, right? We established we have his name. Do we have faith in his name? Whatsoever you ask in my name, you shall receive that your joy may be made full. Do we have faith in his name? Do we have faith that when we use the name of Jesus, we will have the results of Jesus? 
do we have faith in his name that we indeed don't have to take our loved one to a miracle ministry. We ourselves will lay hands on them in Jesus' name and pray for healing. Do we have faith in his name? You see, it's not in our hands. It's, not, it's in his name. It's not in our name. It's in his name. If we have faith in his name, we will lay hands on the sick. Ourselves. Why? Because he told us to. And he said, in my name you shall. Not in my name you might. In my name they will. In my name some will. No, in my name you will. Will. Absolutely positive. Do it. In my name. His name through faith in his name. So he, said, he tells us what to do in his name. He tells us what to believe in his name. He tells us how to pray in his name. And, and he even said, hitherto you've asked nothing in my name. Ask. Start asking in my name. Start presenting my name. Start using my name. Don't you wonder that probably the most common curse word throughout the English language is his name? Yeah, I mean, people drop all kinds of bombs. I mean, that's much more common now than ever before. But I still think his name itself, just his name, People say that in anger. People say that in pain. People say that in frustration. And Jesus said he wants us to use his name with faith in his name. Now, when people drop his name as a curse, they don't have faith in his name, do they? That's the demonic way of the world, to twist something so that when people say it, they say it as a curse, not as a blessing. But we have his name, and we have faith in his name. Do you have faith that when you do something in the name of Jesus, it will produce? Do you have faith that when you speak the word of God in his name, it will produce? That when you act upon his word in his name, it will produce? That when we gather in his name, it produces? He's here with us. He said, if two or more gather in my name, I will be there. Do you believe he's here? Do you believe his power is here? That's faith in his name. We don't just tag on his name at the end of a prayer. It's not like, you know, just add that so that everything we do is in the name. No, it's having faith in his name. When we pray in the name of Jesus, we are presenting everything Jesus is to our Father. We are, in other words, if you were in a play, let's say you were in a play. No, let's say you were in a movie, even better. Let's say you were in a movie and you were an actor and you had a role to play. Let's say, what would be a, like a really weird role to play? Let's say, I don't know. Let's say, let's say you were, you were the Chainsaw Massacre guy, right? I've never seen one of those movies, but I've seen a lot of memes with the guy with the hockey mask on holding the chainsaw. Is that right? Let's say you were the chainsaw person, okay? You wouldn't go to film the way you are right now. You would put on the chainsaw mask. You would wear, you would hold a chainsaw, right? You wouldn't be there holding your Bible in a nice suit to be the chainsaw massacre guy. You would put on the character. And of course, you'd have your, your hockey mask on and you'd have your chainsaw and you wouldn't be chasing people saying, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? Right? I mean, it might be an effective way to win souls, yeah. Especially dark at night on lonely roads. You might get a lot of people confessing Jesus. But your character would be that you're, you probably, I don't know, does the guy ever talk? He just sort of shows up. I've, I've only seen memes. Does he actually have a voice? Does he talk? Does he? No, he doesn't. He just goes around chopping people up, right? He just, you know, shows up and chops up. So that's it. So that would be your role. But you would put on the mask, you would put on the chainsaw, you would put on the character, and you would go around being scary. You know, can you, you imagine if you show up for the first filming, and you've got your nice suit on, your hair's nicely combed, and you're carrying a Bible, and you have tracks to pass out on the set? Okay, that's wonderful, but that's not the part you're playing. All right, now we, when we are born again, we have a new part to play. And we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We wear him 
because we in ourselves are not righteous, but he is, and we now have the righteousness of Christ. That gives us the use of his name. So when we present his name to the Lord, we are trusting that in his name, the Lord is answering the prayer of Jesus because we put on Jesus. Faith in his name means it's as if Jesus himself is asking this. And can you ever think of a time when Jesus would not have an answer? Even at the very last moments of his life, he said, Father, if it's possible, take this cup. But not my will, really, not my, your will be done. Every prayer Jesus prays is answered. Some haven't been answered yet concerning the last days and his return. So his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. Whom you see and know, yes, here it is, the faith that is by him. Now this is very interesting. Because in the Greek, it's the faith that is through him. Our faith comes through Jesus. Our faith comes through him. We don't have faith except through him so if our faith is through him he's the author and finisher of our faith it is the same faith that he used to walk on water it is the same faith that he used to turn water into wine it is the same faith that he used to call Lazarus out of the tomb it's the same faith that he commented on the centurion who had some of this faith and the woman who touched the hem of his garment and he said your faith has made you whole and Bartimaeus it's the same faith that healed Bartimaeus eyes it's the same faith that caused the little girl the synagogue, uh, the synagogue rulers daughter to rise from the dead it's the same faith that caused him to be pulled out of the synagogue in Nazareth and about to be thrown off the hill and he just walks through the midst of them and they couldn't touch him anymore that's the faith of Jesus that's the faith we have in his name the faith has come through him it's come through him it is not just we're plucking it out of here or there it is funneled through Jesus which means it's of him by him through him and in him his name through faith in his name has made this man strong yes the faith which is through him has given him faith gives did you realize that we talk about being a giver faith gives faith is a giver that's why if you can't give to the gospel you don't have the faith of christ if you can't tithe if you can't honor god with offerings you simply don't have his faith so don't worry about praying in the name of jesus it's not going to work it's not there you may struggle through your prayers over and over or have a, other people of faith pray because let's face it, the man who is lame is not the one who had the faith here. The woman who touched Jesus' garment, Jesus turned around and said, you've got faith. Your faith healed you. He felt power go out of him and he didn't send the power out. She pulled it out by her faith. But here, the paralyzed man didn't have faith. He had expectation because Peter built his expectation by saying, look at us. And he's expecting, he's expecting to receive something. He's expecting. But he doesn't have faith for a miracle of healing. He's expecting some coins. But he's expecting a blessing. Here, it's Peter and John's faith. Peter and John's faith gets this man healed. Now, let's examine that for a minute. Because so many times... We will tell people, well, if you just had more faith, you would get that healing. You know, it, if you just had more faith, you'd get that healing. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever been told that? Yes, absolutely. That is absolutely true. The woman who touched had enough faith to pull the healing out. But you can turn that around to the person telling you that. And saying, if you just had more faith, you'd get me healed by laying hands on me in the name of Jesus. Now, you're not going to make many friends like that, but it's Peter and John's faith here that did the miracle on the other person. It says real clearly, that faith, which is through Jesus, has given this man faith has given this man now how did Peter and John get that faith because we like to look at them and say well if we were with Jesus for three years we'd have that faith too they were special they were apostles 
they had an advantage that we don't have. Can you name any of the 70 that Jesus sent out? We don't know any of their names. The Bible tells us that Jesus sent 70 disciples, not apostles, 70 disciples. Are you disciples of Jesus? Yes. He took 70 disciples. We don't know their names, which means they were not apostles. They were not founders. They were not foundational in the gospel. 70 nameless individuals who followed him. And he says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, go in everywhere I'm going to go and prepare the way. They come back to him and they, with joy, they come back with joy. They say, Lord, even devils, demons are subject unto us. They obey us through your name. Now, prior to that, the scripture says, and he gave them power and authority to heal sickness and cast out devils. And people again say, well, yeah, if we were with Jesus, we would have that power too. He could give us that power. They had an advantage that we don't have. No. When they came back, they identified the power. They're subject unto us through your name. We use your name. We own your name. We have your name. We believe in your name. It is not a problem for us today that we are not with Jesus 2,000 years ago. The problem is that we don't have faith in his name. It's as plain as that. His name through faith in his name. That when we use his name, it works. When we use his name, it produces. When we use his name, there's healing, there's provision, there's breakthrough, there's power. When we use the name of Jesus. Through thy name. How do we get that faith? Through his name. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. So it's not just hearing the word of God. It's not, it could have said, faith comes by hearing the word of God. No, faith comes by hearing. That hearing means listening. That listening means to the voice of the Lord, to the spirit of God, for the still small voice, for instructions. Jesus was not a free agent doing what he wanted to do and then rejoicing in what was happening, he said, whatsoever I see the Father do, that's what I do. Whatsoever I see the Father do, that's what I do. Well, what do we see the Father doing through us? The short answer, not much. We got to change our sight, change our vision. See that God wants to use each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. We are so accustomed. Let, let, me, let me put it this way. How, how many of you remember in the old days when there were only like three television stations, three networks? There's ABC, NBC, CBS, and then PBS was added. And in those days, PBS had no advertising. That was billed as public. And then somehow they, they, they snuck advertising into it, but that's another story. ABC and at CBS, I think CBS, 7 p.m., Walter Cronkite would come on. The voice of truth. If Walter Cronkite said it, you know it was true. On the other channel, Frank Reynolds, ABC, Frank Reynolds. Frank, Re I believe Frank Reynolds, too. Frank Reynolds just seemed, I, I'll never forget the time that he was getting conflicting information about some breaking news story while he was on the air, and he lost it. He said, well, somebody get it right. He just lost it. He wanted to report the truth. He didn't want to report what somebody thought, what somebody thinks. He wanted to report the truth. Frank Reynolds, Walter Cronkite, and then there was Dan Rather, right? Was he the one on the other station? I don't remember who was on the other one. Was it Dan Rather? Dan Rather. And these three were like the superstars of news. I don't know this for a fact, but I would imagine that if they're walking down the street and someone recognized them, they would ask for their autograph. Now, they were the originals. And then after that, we started to get the, the quick cable and 24-hour news cycles, and we started to get a whole lot of people that began to be stars. These people, these three that I first mentioned, 
they were pretty plain. Matter of fact, talk of the news. But then you started to get stars, news stars. And the news wasn't about the news anymore. It was about the star. Did you ever see that transition take place? And people began to be television personalities, not just, and, and I would look at them and I would think, you know, it's not you, it's the news. We don't care about you. All you do is read the news. That's all you do. You're not a star. You're not, you're not Hollywood, you're not an actor. You just read the news, or maybe that's the problem. Maybe you are an actor. Making up the news, possibly that's why. But they, they, they went into stardom, and they began to believe in their stardom. The Bible shows us that we have the name of Jesus. Jesus used his name, gave his name to be used. And it, as successful as we are, as powerful as we may be, as full as the miracles are, it's not about us. It's about the news, the good news, that Jesus heals, Jesus delivers, Jesus transforms, Jesus provides. And when we know his name and use his name in prayer or in authority, because in his name we will cast out devils. I love the one when in the book of Acts, when there are some people that were casting out devils and, and say, I command you to come out in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. That same Jesus, you know, because there were other Jesus at the time. Jesus was, uh, was not a, only an isolated name just for Jesus, the Son of God. It was a Hebrew name. So they had to make sure Jesus, who Paul preaches, that Jesus, I cast you out in that name. And remember the, the seven sons of Siva? Sounds like she sells seashells by the seashore. The seven sons of Siva. And um, the, the demon beats them up. I mean, wipes them out. One demon. Because he comes out and says, all right, I know Jesus. And I know Paul. Who are you? They obviously did not have the name of Jesus. They did not know the name of Jesus. They did not believe in the name of Jesus. They were just using it. But how many people today use his name in the similar way? I'm not saying in a, in a bad way like they were, but in a way without knowing him, without knowing his name, without having faith in his name, but just being taught that we pray in Jesus' name. Oh, and then there's all, I love the, uh, you know, when you get in places where people are very sensitive when they pray, and so they end their prayer rather than in the name of Jesus, they end their prayer in thy name, in the Lord's name. What Lord? Lord Shiva? They call him Lord too, Lord Shiva. Uh, what, what Lord are you talking about? It's the name of Jesus. It's that name above every name. He says, as we come to the conclusion here, the faith which is through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Faith in the name of Jesus gives. Faith in the name of Jesus produces. Faith in the name of Jesus brings results. Faith in the name of Jesus produces answered prayer, produces miracle healings, produces supernatural deliverance. And every one of us have the name of Jesus. Every one of us are told to lay hands on the sick. If you believe, you shall. Jesus said this. If you believe, you shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. You shall cast out devils not just a certain few with a deliverance ministry. In fact, in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, there's not one deliverance ministry gift. Nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, power gifts, vocal gifts, revelation gifts, there's no deliverance gift. There is discerning of spirits, but there's no deliverance gift. We tend to kind of go off the deep end in that area. Every single one of us have been given power in his name 
We've been empowered through his name. Now, I, a story I haven't told in a little, little while, when Pastor Mary Beth and I, you know the story that when we, we first got back from Israel, we joined a church, and uh, the elderly pastors in the church, and we just felt like we wanted to minister. We, we wanted to do something for the Lord. So we went up to the pastor. We said, we would love to serve in the church. Is there anything that we can do? And he was delighted. He looked at us and said, yes, yes, we can use you right away. I'm like, yes. And uh, he says, we need somebody to teach first through third grade. Well, that's not what I was thinking. I was thinking of something a little bit, you know, more exciting. So I said, okay, we'll pray about it. You know, that's what you say when you want to lie to the pastor. We'll pray about it. I got it. When you say that to me, I know what you're talking well, I know what you're saying. I can read between the lines. I ask you to do something. Well, we'll pray about it. Why don't you go to Italy with us? Yeah, we'll pray about it. Oh, yeah, right. So uh, I said, we'll pray about it. And, you know, about a week or so later, Pastor Ray Beth says to me, well, did you? I said, did I what? Pray about it. I said, pray about what? <laughs> True. Pray about what? She said, teaching first through third grade. You told the pastor you're going to pray about it. I said, I don't want to teach first through third grade. I don't even want to pray about it. She said, but you told him you're going to pray about it. I said, all right, I'll pray about it. I prayed about it. The Lord said he wanted us to do it. I said, but I don't want to do it. And they didn't hear anything else, you know. They don't hear anything. I have found that in my prayer life, if I refuse to do what he wants me to do, he stops talking to me, kind of like a wife. Stops talking to me. I didn't say my wife. I said a wife. Okay, I was talking about your wife. I wasn't talking about mine. I'm talking about yours. Hey, I am. I got it covered. I got it covered. You what? You won't stop talking. Yeah, exactly. It's the other way. So, so I said, all right, all right, we'll do it. So I go to the pastor. I said, okay, we're going to do it. Can you give us some teaching materials? He said, oh, no, 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 no. I said, no. What do we teach him? He said, teach him from the Bible. Okay. Now, we had been so pumped up in Israel. With Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen, Norval Hayes, uh, what was the, the guy? Uh, Price. Fred Price. Fred Price and um, some others. So we decide we're going to teach the kids that stuff. We're first of all going to start teaching them how to be born again. Then we're going to teach them how to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then we're going to teach them how to lay hands on the sick. Then we're going to teach them how to give testimonies. Then we're going to teach them how to cast out devils. We're going to teach them this stuff. So we, we had, and our, our class grew. I mean, it grew. And we had a bunch of these kids. And so we would, uh, we would always have a testimony time. We'd put a chair in the middle and have a circle of chairs around, and someone would sit in the chair and give a testimony. And, uh, and then another one would give a testimony. So we gave a teaching on the name of Jesus. And it wasn't from this scripture. It was from elsewhere in the Bible. And we told them about how powerful the name of Jesus is and how to use the name of Jesus and how to command with the name of Jesus. Well, the next week, one little boy he could not wait for the teaching, you know, because we always had the testimony time after the teaching. He wanted to have it right away because he had a testimony and he had to share it. So he said, okay, so we had the testimony time. And he told us the story that there was a really nasty, vicious dog in his neighborhood, always chained up, and it would bark and bite, always bit the kids or anybody who came near it. And he was riding his bicycle by the house. The dog, going wild, broke the chain and began to chase him. He's pedaling as fast as he can, and the dog's gaining on him. He can't get away. Pretty soon, the dog's going to get his leg, and he remembered the teaching. He turned around, one hand on the handlebar, turns and points his finger and said, Go home in Jesus' name. The dog turned around and ran home. Now, I don't think he nor any of the other children will ever forget the power in the name of Jesus after something like that. The kids ate up the Word of God, loved it. And basically, I taught them the same stuff that I teach you, just in a little bit lower language here than there. They were much more educated, so I gave them in a higher language. Here, I dumb it down. 
But the first through third graders, I just gave it to them. No, you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. The faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And I said faith is by him or through him. How do we get it? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing, we're listening. We're listening. We're listening. And as we listen, we hear what the Lord wants us to do. And hearing comes by the word of God. The more we hear the word of God, the more we meditate in the word of God, the more we focus on the word of God, the better our hearing is to the voice of the Spirit. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes through the word of God. Meditate in this book of the Bible. Let it not depart from your eyes. Hide it in your heart. That you may observe to do all that is written therein. Then will you make your way prosperous. And then will you have good success. There is no way we will prosper and be in success if we don't hear his voice. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. So we, we got that down. The word. And now we move on to the faith. It's not our faith. It's his faith. It comes to us because the word builds us up. As we study and meditate and read the Word of God, we find out just what we can have faith for. Before I was saved, I didn't have faith for miraculous healing. I didn't have faith for authority and power. I didn't have faith for open doors or for the path to walk. I didn't have faith for any of those things because I didn't know those were promises of God. But once I learned them, I extended my faith for them. I believed for them. And I prayed in His name, through faith in his name, made me strong, provided answers, provided direction, provided purpose, that I could say, the faith which is through him has given me this perfect answer. That's his name. And we own it. It belongs to us in Jesus' name. Amen.